It all begins with a Facebook post. There it was, being shared all over the social media platform. A white spotted domestic rabbit was detected in Lime Kiln Canyon, a hiking trail in Porter Ranch, Los Angeles. It was likely a former pet bunny that was abandoned by its owner. So I asked my friend Vicki, who runs a rabbit rescue, if she'd join me in trying to rescue the rabbit. So you've seen him twice? I've seen him twice, yeah. so somebody else obviously saw him nearby. Oh gosh, I hope he's still alive. I think it's easier for me not to go downhill, but to come from the bottom up. Except uh, I don't I'm want gonna, to chase him out this yeah, way either. I our rescue group soon turned into five people, then six, as we searched the canyon far and wide for this bunny. I knew immediately upon arriving this would be unlike any other rescue I had done based on the terrain. As you can see, there was endless amounts of brush, which was tall and difficult to see or walk through. Surrounding the canyon were also steep cliffs, where we were told the bunny was often seen. It was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. A local hiker said she had spotted the rabbit and offered to walk me to the location site. I honestly thought it was like a bunny rabbit that just was part of the area. The average person, unfortunately, doesn't often know the difference between a pet rabbit and a wild rabbit and assume they are one in the same. But the truth is, pet rabbits, which have been domesticated by humans for hundreds of years, are completely dependent on humans for their survival. They often have different facial and body shapes, as well as different colored coats to that of the wild rabbit. But most importantly, the average person also probably tends to forget that rabbits are prey. And in a place like Lime Kiln Canyon, there's always a hungry predator looking for its lunch. Got some banana, apple, some rabbit lure. So oh, this hey. is alfalfa. Well, who knows what his favorite is, but we have a variety with marigolds. After hours of looking and waiting with no luck, we decided we would pack up and leave. But as we were loading up our cars... Oh my God, we found him, we found him. Oh my God, oh my God, he's going down there. We felt like we had hit the jackpot. The bunny was alive, awake and in sight. Vicky, he's running. He's coming on this side. We tried setting up different mechanisms we thought would lure the rabbit, but we quickly realized this rabbit was very smart and wasn't going to fall for it. You guys, he, he's climbing the mountain. Yeah. Rabbits are incredibly fast runners, which is why chasing them will never work. We also were not professional rock climbers, so running up the side of a cliff where the bunny had found several hiding holes was too dangerous. Vicky, what do we do? Look what do we do? Go. That's Yeah, this is, this is a tough one. This is really tough. I can't believe the people who did this. This baby is not gonna live very long out here. And next to the road, can you believe that? The problem with leaving a cage to trap is that you have to monitor them 24 seven. You can't just neglect a trapped animal. So many things could go wrong and we were gonna have to go home at some point. Don't move, stay right there. Just give it a minute. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's right here. He's right here. Yeah, we see him. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. My shoes go through the hole. Just have your arms ready. That's why when they go in the maternity. He's coming up to you. He's coming up to you. Oh my God, he's coming up to you. 
no, he's going in that hole again. Yeah. All right, guys, we are on day two of trying to rescue this bunny. The second time around, we decided to create traps all over the area. Our day consisted mostly of waiting and waiting some more. After about 3 p.m., we noticed the rabbit stopped coming out and likely was going to sleep, which is what happened last time. So once again, we had to abort the rescue and come back another day. And it's a shame whoever did this because you can really tell the difference between a domestic bunny that's grown up in a good home like Lennon versus a bunny like this that was dumped. That's probably why this bunny is afraid of humans and not trusting us. This is definitely the hardest rescue I've ever done. We went back a couple more times using different tools each time to no avail. Our time was limited since after 3 p.m. the bunny would stop coming out and the sun was setting earlier. The sweet spot seemed to be around 1 p.m. That was when the bunny was most active. But every time we went home empty-handed, there was a fear that we wouldn't see the bunny a next time. So we decided to try a completely different approach, one that would allow us to earn the bunny's trust. We figured if we could bring the bunny closer to a flatter surface, it would be more accessible for us to catch it rather than having to go through all these barriers. So Brittany has been coming almost daily for what, two weeks? Yeah, like two weeks. Feeding the bunny in this spot to get him on a routine so that we can now enclose this with the X pens. This is this is not gonna be easy. See, this is this is where where I we've been feeding him. Smart. The idea was for the bunny to go inside the X-Pen where we could enclose it from there. And the bunny did go inside. But unfortunately, the instant I tried to close the pen, it bolted at what seemed like the speed of light. Then we thought of tying a string to the door and letting it fling shut from afar. But you guessed it, the bunny didn't fall for that either. All right guys, we couldn't get him this time, but I feel like we're getting closer and closer now that I know exactly what mechanism I wanna use. And now that we've got him on more of a routine. Most people would have given up by now. In fact, many would have stopped after the first attempt. But I just knew deep in my gut that this bunny had to be rescued. We were running out of time, as each passing day could be a death sentence for them. And I knew on day six that this was the day. Thanks to Brittany's daily feedings, the bunny began to associate us with food. I'm like, I don't have anything to give you. You want apple? Here, here. Or not. And so we waited and waited, but the bunny would not go into the pen. The bunny was so close to us though, that I started to feel confident slowly sliding over to it with a net. I knew I had to be careful because even the slightest flinch on my end could ruin the entire thing. I then tossed a piece of apple into the net without a definitive plan on what to do next. And to my surprise, the bunny hopped right in it. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I don't know what to do. You want to jump out? Want to if, no, the thing is if I move, he's going to okay, bolt. I quickly realized that moment was key. It showed the bunny the net was nothing to be afraid of. And as soon as the bunny turned away. Oh, oh my god! god. Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Wait, get the kennel! Oh my god! Hi, baby! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We gotta get it! Oh! oh. 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 
All that work, I had a feeling. Yeah, that goes our life. Woohoo! Oh my god. <laughs> I knew we were gonna do it. I just, I knew it was like any day now. We took her, yes, she's a girl, over to Vicky at Adopt a Bunny Rabbit Inc., where she'll get spayed and be placed up for adoption. It felt so good to know that she finally had a warm room, a roof over her head now, and was safe away from predators, and that her tiny little paws could touch carpet. you survive all these months out there? Probably smells linen on me. <laughs> it was truly a miracle that she survived as long as she did in the wild. So Brittany named her miracle, and I couldn't agree with that more.